Hi everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm burned, blasted, and a little bit befuddled as I bring to you the review for Bombshell, one of those isometric three-force view shooters with brief connections to Duke Nukem and replaces that militant oversex tryhard with a one-armed, tough-as-nails female main protagonist that somehow tries even friggin' harder. As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Bombshell. Quantity over quality, fighting Cthulhu, and the world's most unique form of quality assurance in game development I think I've ever seen. So let's do it. Graphics are up first. I can't lie. Using the Unreal Engine and floating around the world with every kind of colored light and various special effect that you can imagine, at times, Bombshell can look almost awe-inspiringly good. From the glow of lava beaming upwards through cracks in the floor to the shimmering ethereal goodness of alien currency, all the way to the almost space marine-like main alien troopers you fight, the game really can look amazing. And for the most part, aside from a couple drops, below, say, 60 frames per second, it all ran really well. Now, while the first level with its rain-soaked White House location was a bit dark and contrasty on the eyes, it's a good little visual play on narrative, subtly, where the earth is the dark, nasty, blustery place that looks like crap, while the alien worlds, of course, remind you that even when you're over the age of, say, 12, if two people build a fort, you're pretty much always going to like the other person's fort better. Now, one weird little issue, though, is that while the enemies, when fighting, have all kinds of cool animations, the main character is really mundane, and in any of the melee combat, and even leveraging up the skills later, results in poor representations of those skills. Normally, that would elicit that, oh Jesus, dude, what did I just see kind of thing. Instead, it's pretty much bombshell turned white like a ghost and zips around the world for a second. Weapons and their effects are pretty well done with excellent locations and multicolored projectiles that self-illuminate the world around them and do a good job translating action into reaction, as you will find yourself sometimes dodging simply due to seeing one side of the screen briefly flash as a hidden enemy tries to shoot you and send you on a dirt nap. I would say good but not great, with an eye towards environmental excellence, but also lacking a little bit in animation. Sound, music, and voice. That's for Earth. And sound is up first, and it's good, and though there's sort of a lack of diversity once you really dive into the weapons, they have a good sonic resonance to them and sound somewhat different from one another. However, the chain gun is most likely the weakest of all of them, with almost no low end, resulting in a chain gun that's apparently shooting airsoft pellets instead of reinforced tungsten into aliens' brain boxes. Environmentally, the mix is pretty good, and locations do change up the sound as well as having their own mixture of environmental attributes like meteors falling, lightning, or heavy rain. I would say good as a package. Music. <laughs> this isn't for me. Uh, though it's inspired by typical action soundtracks, even with a typical large violin accompaniment through specific battle scenes to make you feel all action-y, the main issue here is that imitation isn't the sincerest form of flattery, it's the worst form of creation. Almost everything seems cribbed from some action movie or an expected scene from another video game. Even from the raging guitar chords in one area that are there to remind you that Bombshell is friggin' awesome as a character, to the more somber moments, there's no change-up, there's no mystery. It's what you expect, except if your expectations were for music delivered by someone who bought a sample loop DVD from a generic chord company. There's no real flexibility to the music and certainly no real surprise. Now that being said, it's not bad either. I just say it's very blah this to my ears. Of course, strange. your mileage is going to vary. Voice. Christ. If you're going to have a character drop a one-liner, then one in that sentence should not indicate how friggin' many lines there are for the whole game, and that's what it feels like. The same one-liners are used all the time, and most have very little connection to the game. For example, Bombshell keeps saying, this is for my car. Since the car only shows up for 2.3 seconds at the start of the game, I kept thinking she was saying, this is for Lars, because I just assumed it was some unshown buddy of hers who died during the White House attack at the start of the game, and maybe didn't get into the final cut, because seriously, basically, this chick really isn't here to save the president anyway, or maybe even humanity, because she barely talks about them. She's basically pissed because another worldly presence screwed up her Hummer, <laughs> which is an awesome sentence when you really think about it. Anyway, NPCs are phoned in as well and sound terrible, both in overall tonal delivery, but also in their pattern and their pace. They sound bored and never sound like they're in the moment. One character you see basically should be shit in his pants, but instead he has all the emotion of a dude making a choice at Walmart. Poor to average. Gameplay. So this plays like Diablo without the massive classes or choice and should be about putting the herd on enemies in the form of energy and ballistic weaponry, the likes of which would be banned by most UN treaties. But 
to really understand that impact, let's talk about story first. The story is, you play as Bombshell, who made a mistake years earlier during a bomb disposal job and had her arm blown off. Luckily, Toyota, or maybe it was some DARPA, said, screw it, and we're going to give you a new one, and outfitted her with the Pleasure Shrieker 2000, an arm weapon that starts out with just a laser gun, but can then be outfitted as you go along, because for some reason, the aliens in the game world leave these awesome weapons only you can outfit all over their shattered planets, you know, just to give you a little bit of a chance. Through that, you run, gun, slide, dash, laser, and light on fire the enemies before you as you search for the president which the aliens have kidnapped and taken to another world a president mind you who's wearing an american flag eye patch and that is probably one of the coolest parts of the game so far trust me now side quests are given out by sedate opiate filled npcs who deliver you to you ultimatums and one-liners stolen from other video games it's not safe out there take this oh i get it that's a zelda reference yeah that's like spraying perfume on a pile of dog crap you can still see the logs right there in front of you so you explore other worlds and as you do gain alien money which turns into real money money due to your arm's internal currency exchange, and you can upgrade the arm and any weapons that you find along the way. Now, the upgrade for everyone has one major split in its path tree, where you can then choose a different overall style for the secondary projectile that those weapons use. That's one of the great things about Bombshell. They may not have been the coolest weapons ever, but I actually really enjoyed them for the most part, and taking different trees for the skills would really have indicated and indeed given you different playthroughs. I also enjoyed the fact that the starting weapon wasn't one you dropped right away, and its upgrades can have you godzilla in your way through alien locations just like the others. That being said, nothing is actually indeed new here. Most weapons do upgrade the way you would assume, though being able to detach your arm and huck it to the floor and have it come alive and take out enemies was very cool, but it was an underused ability in the end. Now, speaking of abilities, you can also upgrade these as you go up in levels. You can get skills like punch or dash, and all of them do damage to enemies once you hit them, and you can also raise your health and other such things. It's bog standard. One thing I hated, though, I absolutely hated, was the UI. It's in your way. It's fairly unmovable and unmodifiable, and it makes aiming on enemies in corners on the edge of the screen a stone-cold bitch, a problem that enemies themselves don't have. It's cumbersome and about 20 times the size it needs to be. I could have glued a real map on the damn screen and it would have taken up less space than this. A game like this really needs to have good level structure and enemy design and encounters, but more importantly, it has to have that hook to drive you forward, as other games do, else you won't give a shit about the power-ups and so forth. The hook here, though, is, well, there really isn't one. The weapons are genre standard, the skills are as boring as they could be, but the worst part of the game is the fact that it's really just average, and then there are the bugs, which are glorious. I mean, these aren't just bugs. These are infestations. I haven't played with something this buggy since the back of my Dodge Dart in 1994. And I mean, Jesus Christ, it's a bug simulator. Enemies, you, world items, fall through the floor at all times. You get stuck on items, stuck on enemies, stuck on environments. You just stop moving. Enemies freeze and stop moving. Some enemies laughably become immortal, basically upgrading to Highlander quality right in front of you, impossible to kill. And that's just the joy of the first little bit. And then there's the boss fights, or should I say boss fight, because this is for the first time in forever that I finally put down a game due to it not being ready for prime time. So those people who are mad at me for only playing eight hours of the first level, remember this, five of those hours were working through the bugs. This is a game where the trailer was so bad that they basically said, oh shit, and revamped the game. Then in November said, we have some bugs, we need to work on it, so we're delaying it until January. My personal belief is that maybe they meant January 2017 and someone misread it and released it. It's one of the most buggy games I've ever played, and the culmination of this was the first planet's boss battle. I like to call it, Carrick just gives the hell up. I mean, this boss froze in place, never got hurt, or hit me when I was about 20 body lengths away, or got stuck in an animation and looked like they were that shaking ghost in Jacob's Ladder, or one of an assortment of other horror movie oddities. I spent 45 minutes simply trying to keep my character from falling into nothingness, since some of the locations feel like they're made of Swiss cheese, all the while trying to stop the enemy from dropping rocks on my face, or eating me with its Sigmund Freud vagina hands. Yeah. No. I turned it off. Listen, when a game has this many issues, at some point you look at that war-torn field of your past couple hours and you realize this is stupid. Eight hours with friggin' five of them just fighting bugs. No. Fun factor. You know, when the game wasn't having all manner of bugs or issues, it was actually okay fun, but to a very low standard, possibly a free-to-play first-level demo standard. That's about it. This game needed at least six more months and then some. Honestly, it could have been something special because as you're battling and moving around and adjusting weapons, there's something there. Even if the main bosses are the typical triple-wave variety we've seen go the way of the Dodo years before in game design. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again. This is solidly a never touch it again. I don't reward this lack of quality assurance, nor do I forgive it. At the premium price for this game, F no. 
Now, I have stated this before, and I'll state it again. No developer wakes up and says, let's make a crappy game. But this game had issues from the very start. Red warning lights flashing off in the guise of a trailer that might have been so bad it changed the DNA of those who had to watch it. And much hasn't improved here. I don't know why or how we got this. I just want it to stop. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, hit thumbs up. If you didn't, hit thumbs down. Maybe share it. Maybe like it. Tell some people about it. Maybe do none of those things. World's about freedom of choice. Peace out. But he might come back here looking for me. Sounds brave. Look, unfortunately, a lot of these soldiers are fresh out of training. Most of them have barely been behind the barrel of a gun, let alone the end of one. They either get too ambitious or too jumpy.